Oye, oye Bienvenue en ce jour de jubilé. Chacun des preux et preuses du royaume se voit rassemblé pour célébrer les 20 ans de règne du roi. Il y eut moult aventures et farces, ainsi que d'occasions de se mesurer. Il fut des temps de guerre et de jeu, mais en ces lieux nous ferons les deux. Brandissez votre lance et mesurez-vous aux étincelantes chevaleresses et chevaliers autour de vous. Faites preuve de précision, d'orgueil et d'élégance pour vous voir alors couvert de roses par milliers. Mais par-delà la victoire, saurez-vous être téméraire pour mettre à nouveau en jeu votre honneur My ladies, my lords, welcome to the final presentation of A Knight's Honor. A Knight's Honor is a medieval justing game where, armed with your spear and your honor, you try to tip off your opponent from his horse. But you are, gonna, you are going to do this in a singular way. You are doing this with a pool noodle and a yoga ball. As first intention, when we were creating the game, we wanted to create a party game with a light competition aspect. Uh, the spectacular scenery that we choose is also very important and play a big part in the global experience, uh, as well as a psychological and physical aspect uh, with a lot of social interaction. Uh, to fight as a knight, you're going to have to equip yourself as a knight. Uh, for this, you're going to need three pieces of equipment, the first one of which uh, is your spear, as you can see over here, uh, which is made of a pool noodle, to, um, which is a non-toy a non uh, to encourage a, a playful uh, uh, environment. Um, so you're going to, at the tip of your controller, you're going to have a WIM controller, and uh, with that, you're going to aim at the screen to move an in-game um, Uh, spear in order to touch your opponent. Uh, you will have to touch your opponent on precise area of the body to mark more or less points. And this is the in-game look. Uh, then, when you've mastered your spear, you're going to need your trusty and bouncy steed, which happened to be a yoga ball, which we choose to, um, <laughs> uh, to emulate uh, the rocking uh, of a horse. And also because it's, well, It's, it's fun, <laughs> um, which uh, so this is not um, interactive by the way, it's purely for game fill um, use. And then uh, you're going to need uh, your armor uh, in order to defend yourself, which is uh, two microcontrollers uh, placed on your lap, and you need to touch, to uh, tip, to uh, tilt uh, your character in order to avoid the enemy spear or at least uh, disturb uh, the enemy aim. Uh, this is uh, the basic controller for gameplay as an accessibility. As we previously saw, uh, the physical aspect is very important in the game. Thus, we wanted to make sure that the global experience was accessible as much uh, for as much people as possible. Um, therefore, when we were uh, doing our playtest, we, we looked at the uh, user behavior and noticed the different parts uh, of the experience that uh, might need some tweaking uh, to stay accessible for everyone. Therefore, we were creating a lot of uh, alternative material that we can use to personalize and uh, customize, custom <laughs> customize the experience as much as possible. Uh, the team is on the stand at all time, and the user is never left alone. Uh, so it is very adjustable depending on the different need. 
About the onboarding part uh, and the setting of the experience, uh, because of the alternative controller, uh, the tutorial is very important uh, for the player to, to be introduced to the different mechanics that he can use. Um, then the tutorial is uh, divided in three different phases. The first one is simply to introduce the general control of the controller itself. Uh, then the aiming part uh, is uh, introduced to the player too. Um, and finally, on the third part, uh, the dodge mechanics is uh, introduced to the player. So, uh, how do you just? Uh, firstly, uh, you race uh, towards your opponent uh, in a phase when you can uh, be become more familiar with the control and everything. Then, uh, when you're close enough, uh, um, a bullet time starts in order to let you time to adjust your uh, aim, to dodge, to look at your opponent. And uh, after a few seconds, uh, automatically contact is made and you hit the other one or you are hit, the one being hit. And uh, this uh, cycle over and over, depending on where you, you hit uh, the other player, you will, earn, you will earn more or less points. And at the end, this is going to determine uh, which player is victorious. Um, so uh, now that we are done with gameplay, the art direction. Thanks. So, oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, the big goal of the art directions is to image the player into a fantasy medieval world and to highlight the effect of speed and impact and other feedback. At the beginning of this project, we wanted to make a very realistic games, more like a simulation. And then we chose a 3D low poly pipeline to better fit the toy aspect and the joyful atmosphere of this project. And this choice is directly linked to the camera design. The first challenge of the visual direction is to create an obvious basis between different avatars and players. So they are designed to be a moving target with different areas to touch uh, with colors and texture. Uh, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> to uh, metallic texture. That shapes give them also a personality. They look like strong and brave. They look like caricatural and neutral hero ready to fight. And then the player and knights will evolve inside a single stray arena that they will see again and again. To add some variation to the past player, we choose some different uh, simple props like flags to add also a festive atmosphere to the other to the other element, sorry. <laughs> Therefore, uh, the UI gives you us another vision of the medieval universe of the game. There is some realistic texture of paper and gold with some historical inspiration. And in a way, the UI is a visual link between the experience in real life and the 2D and chunky visual of the game, in a way. And the last, the best, uh, <laughs> find some appropriate feedback for an alternative controller like a tool no the noodle pool, sorry, is not uh, an easy task. So there is all of kind of feedback, like speed effects, impact, uh, ragdoll, lots of ragdoll, and then uh, when you touch the ground. Uh, this is all about to make the game even more nervous and interactive for a better experience while the player starts using the controller. And so on. So the main challenge for the sound was to immerse the player in the adjusting match, to give them individual feedbacks and also transmit the ambience of the arena to them. So in order to do that, we placed a setup of different pairs of speakers to each of them. For the sound direction, um, the goal was to strike a good balance between realism and cartoonism to compensate for the low poly nature of the graphics, so as they, so as they convey the power and speed of the justing tournaments be, without being too violent. So here is an example uh, of a round with the dynamic crowd reacting with the results of the charge.
So, about the physics uh, and the game programming in general, I had three major steps inside the game. First is the ragdoll system. The so ragdoll system is uh, from the game engine Unity we used with uh, the physics engine uh, of, uh, of Unity. The ragdoll system uh, is created after an impact. First, you have the animation of the player, and after the impact, the physics takes place and the ragdoll system in enters in and like said Astrid, is really juicy. After that, we have the Spire animation. For the Spire animation, we used the Wiimote and a Wiimote API to control it. And then after some, uh, some effects, uh, we, had to, um, we had the Spire following the movement of the horse and the, and the knight. And that, um, that gave an offset up and down on the spire, which was really, really bad. So, to, to answer that, we used a fake spire that you can see here in white, but you can't see, of course, in game. It's a fake uh, spire, uh, which the animated one is gonna follow every single time and point on. And after that, the dodgy system, it has been made uh, with uh, Maki Maki card, with uh, electronics. The Maki Maki card is usually used to, um, to discover electronics and that uh, give the computer uh, keyboard inputs. So it was really easy to integrate. And the Dogic system has been made with animations and the blend tree of Unity. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, there is a little bug with a uh, cat and toast system. You know, the cat uh, and the toast must both fall in the same way, but here was, it was uh, a little the same, so... <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, do not hesitate to come visit us on our stand in the Retrium scene and compete as proud knights. Uh, we are now going to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you. So, who wants first uh, express us what you felt as a chevalier? Yes. Oh. Hey guys, um, Vincent Mioté, uh, UB, Paris. Uh, congratulations. This project is. Uh, in my opinion, the one I had the most fun on, it was really amazing, well executed, and uh, absolutely a lovely controller, again, so I think I told you that earlier, but still, you deserve this, the credit, so. Um, one question I had for you is that, why did you choose two different character modelization? And maybe a follow-up question as to, do you think it applies a bit of unfairness for the blue player, which was, which was me? <laughs> um, at first, uh, we chose to have two different character models because we wanted to uh, have a clear distinction between the two because we wanted to um, put an emphasis on the dueling aspect of the opposition of two uh, identity. But indeed, it kind of backfires towards the end because it was additional work and it's it's more complicated to balance. So yes, it wasn't the perfect decision, but we made it to to have a more charismatic uh, duel, basically. Uh, Thank you. J'ai une French. Je n'ai pas grand chose à rajouter. J'étais un chevalier redoutable <rire> qui s'est fait battre, je ne sais plus combien, 8 à, 8 à 13. Euh, voilà, je, la seule chose que j'ai regretté, c'est qu'il n'y ait pas des Montjoie Saint-Denis qui apparaissent de temps en temps avec quelques cris au caractère plus mo moyenâgeux et moins footballeux. Mais à part ça, c'était vraiment très bien. Merci Stéphane. Yes. Uh, 
Hi, Luis, sound designer at Ubisoft. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, I had so much fun playing this game, uh, and I'm happy that uh, people are still doing crazy ideas in uh, Masters 1 here. Um, yeah, it, it works really well. Uh, I really like that you went for a playful art direction and it's uh, there's a synergy between the the funny quirky controllers and the character design so I think it worked really well uh, maybe there could be some uh, more crowd reaction and uh, but I think it's it's ready for uh, some contest and uh, ready to win some prizes congrats Oui, non, moi je voulais juste vous féliciter parce que c'est vrai que c'est un, c'est vraiment un jeu qui est abouti et qui est euh, complet euh, de même, en fait, le, le détail de la de la boule, c'est ça, c'est quelque chose qui est, en fait, on pense au contrôleur mais on passe pas forcément à l'installation et c'est vrai que ça rajoute vraiment euh, quelque chose de très fun en fait. Le, d'ailleurs, je, je trouve que dans l'explication, c'est c'est vraiment bien que vous soyez passé une DA beaucoup plus simple et cartoon parce que ça, a, ça améliore la, la lisibilité, ça sert le propos euh, fun du jeu, donc vraiment félicitations, j'ai, j'ai juste rien à dire c'est, c'est parfait quoi. Yes, I knew that we would have some uh, nice testimony from Spain. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you, because uh, thanks to your game, I've been able to see these two fight against each other and arc a lot, like seriously a lot, not just in, during the, your game, but in the games afterwards, so it was amazing. So you have been able to create a game that really embodies the main aesthetic of challenge and on social at the same time, because you need both players, and knowing that there is another human being in the horse, in front of you, and that you can kick, well, lance her ass, or her eye, or her head. <laughs> Marta, you lose, sorry, sorry, it, it was what happened. Uh, at, the, at the same time, I think that you have mentioned during your presentation what I think is the most innovative and crazy, intelligent thing of what you have given us. That is, um, I don't remember exactly the sentence, but I think uh, when you were uh, bouncing in the ball, you say something like, it's not for gameplay, it's for the flow, something like that. But I want to defer, it's for the gameplay also, because the flow affects the gameplay a lot. So don't take back things that really give you credit and that you really identify and you have work for accessibility. I also told you that maybe you can, for people that maybe can hold the the spear, despite that you have been different version of it, to have like a like a device that help someone hold the lance, just an idea. But despite that, uh, you deserve a lot of credit because yes, you have found uh, the 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 combination and also the support between flow and gameplay, and you have made that with, as you have said, a Juga Ball. So congratulations. So, other testimonies or remarks? No? You want to make the Jout again? I don't know how to say that in English. To sing? Okay, okay so I, I think that you'd rather play there than here. Uh, no more remarks, no more? Okay, so yeah. So thank you and uh, congrats again, it was great. <laughs> And let's welcome the following team, Tox Memory.
Oh, welcome, young whippersnapper. Tis your lucky night. You've gained the right to become human once more. Now, heed my words carefully, my ghostly youth. For tonight is the night of the dead, and the humans have fled the city. In order for you to re-enter your corporal form, you have ten hours to compose an outfit so stylish and beautiful they will return you to the human realm. Go and become human one more time. With a mic, it's better. Tog's Memory is a game where you play a ghost who has one night to find clothes and create an identity which lets you re-enter the human realm. Our intentions were pretty clear for the beginning. To create a game which talk about identity, what we want to tell about ourselves with clothes. The night has begun. My guest could arrive at any time now. The onboarding phase starts here, where the player sees the principal puzzle's mechanic for the first time, where they might their guide for the first time. The altar is the link between the world of the living and the spiritual world. There, our character will seek guidance and will be able to experience the ancient magic that helps him throughout the game. You are finally here. It looks like someone was waiting for you, Herival. And this someone is me. I'm a mouse, and I'll be your guide for tonight. The guide is a mouse, a discreet crea night creature, and we selected this design with eye symbol on the wings because for many cultures, mouse or butterflies with eye symbol on their wings are bad omens. They are the envoy of death. What about you? You are a ghost. Who's taking, right? Oh, wait, you can breathe. Okay, <laughs> here we see our ghost in different stages. Uh, our ghost will change its form from a single ball of energy into a complete uh, anthropomorphic creature at the end of the game. Um, it's a creature made out of ectoplasm, that is a magical substance that lets you see th right through it. And, well, we try to make a character the least uh, uh, gendered as possible to maximize the freedom for the players to decide the identity of the character. As a ghost, the character has all the hallmarks of such a poltergeist. They float, pass through walls, and make sure magic falls when they pass close to them. We saw um, clothing as a vessel for self-expression. That's why, for us, it was very important to have this feature of uh, customizable clothing throughout the game. There's lots of different combinations one can make. Uh, we have uh, female clothing, uh, male clothing, and genderless clothing. Oh, I must stop you, but for now you are not yet the beautiful ghost you are thinking about, but more like an ectoplasm ball? Yes, here we are at the most basic stage of the of the creature. Uh, it's just a ball of energy, just like a wisp, but as you will see, that will develop into something more interesting. Damn, you are spawned next to a pretty town, you lucky ghost. It's a cool town indeed, but beware. If you pay attention, you realize the modern world has taken another approach with phantoms. The place is full of magical symbols, artifacts, and evil spirits animals which sole purpose is to keep ghosts out of their home. As for the sound aspects of the game, we wanted to focus on the spooky part for the sound effects without rendering it horrific or scary. Mm, the ambience also uses this aspect to reinforce the immersion and to paint the landscape. The music is mostly calm to contrast with the spooky ambience, thus creating a somewhat strange but comforting mood for the game. As the whole game happens at night, every light source is important. Uh, maybe the most important one is the moon. 
the moon helps to light all the scene, but it's also a way to track uh, the time that passes, as we'll see the, the moon go through the night sky until it disappears at dawn. Another source of uh, light is uh, the public uh, luminary. We have lampposts that help, our help us guide the character throughout the city. And well, also we have uh, magical lights from all the magical objects we'll encounter. Uh, most of the time that means dan danger, so well, it's very important to have light attached. End of sighting for tonight. Look everywhere. We have to find a house where we could steal some classes. When you walk through the, the town, the game is seen through a third-person camera. We have chosen this kind of camera so the player can better see the clothes worn and choose between outfits. Also, it makes it easier to admire the environment and to select a house. The idea was to create two atmospheres. The first one, in the third-person view, in the street where the player can change and try outfits and in the garden to create an infiltration phase with the cats and in the second one is the bird eye view which helps player to quickly understand the nature of puzzles and to find useful information because the most important thing is to find the togs. Don't move. Look there, there are cats. Be careful. It seems like you are not welcome here. Indeed, these hooves are guarded by ghost cats and magical item items. In gardens, ghost cats will try to prevent the player from breaking into the house. There are two kinds of cats, the first type that follow the path in gardens and the ones who are standing idle. When a player enters a cat's line of sight, the player is then kicked out of the garden. As with the mod, we found a lot of references of uh, Cats, like an important creature, for like a creature capable of perceiving ghosts, and as a protector of uh, uh, one's home once the cat is dead. So we found that like a great inspiration to create this character. It was dangerous, but we have managed to escape from cat sites. It's time to hunt her into the house. Look everywhere around you. Something might be useful. Indeed, when the players arrive into houses, the camera will pass from the third-person view to the top-down view. As the first inspiration for Puzzle was Baba Is You, we have kept the top-down view from that game. It's easier for the player to understand where to go in the house, and it's create another view for another kind of gameplay. Oh, we have found the wardrobe. Look at you now. Your upper body is back. This is the half-body character when the player have only one found one, one wear. This is the first step. Player each time will find the upper body clothes first. The player should find the other the clothes as soon as he enters the house. The real challenge starts when the player has found the wardrobe. It was pretty easy to enter the house as the character passed through walls. But now the player has the clothes on. They can't use the same path to leave the house, for the clothes don't pass through walls. Oh wait, indeed you are a ghost, but... Your clothes can pass walls. It's time for you to move more like humans. And this magical walls covered by runes. Your clothes can cross them, but you can't. The first puzzle we work on is the system of runes which create an impassable wall for the ghost. Magic walls between transmitter and receptor items create, created like an electrical circuits. If receptors items are close to transmitters or are already connected, they will then be linked by your magical walls. In order to move freely into the house, player needs to create their own path by moving transmitters. Now let's go to another house. Oh, look at this lantern in the garden. They look so tasty. Oh, wait, what is that? Magical runes? Uh, it looks like you won't be able to cross the garden so easily. The other puzzle works with impossible barrier too. Our intent was to create a light puzzle, a memory-like game with light switches. Players have to toggle light switches to make the magical barrier appear in the dark, but they can't see the wall anymore. Spectacular! You have found the wardrobe in this house. And look at these clothes. They are jeans, dresses. I wonder which one you prefer. The ghost got them human appearance. The player will be approached by the most and guide once more to retrieve their human form. It is the end. You find the perfect outfit. Engine your life once more time as yourself as possible. 
during the development of the game, we thought a lot about how to put more accessibility in it. So first, we simplify the gameplay to only have one button to use for all the interaction. And this button can be remapped anywhere on your controller and at any time. There are also no timer in our game, so the players have unlimited time for solve all the, to solve all the puzzles. The game is available in three languages, English, French, and Spanish. There are also some options, like the possibility to change the, different, the, the volume of different types of audio, or the screen, resolution, the screen resolution, or even the graphics. So the game is able to be run by any computer. Thanks for your attention. If you got any questions, let us know. And uh, you can play out at our games in the room 0E2. Thank you. So, who shoots first? Bonjour à tous. Euh, moi j'ai bien aimé, j'aime beaucoup euh, la fantaisie euh, du jeu. J'aime bien me retrouver contre euh, les humains. Je trouve que c'était une très très bonne idée. J'aime bien aussi le contraste en termes de level design entre la 3D et la top view. Ça je trouve que ça marche très bien. Il euh, y a juste un truc en fait, je ne sais pas si je suis passé à côté euh, ou si ce n'est pas exposé. C'est le fait qu'on en fait, on doit laisser son vêtement avant de rentrer dans un bâtiment, il me semble. Et je ne sais pas si vous l'exposez. Du coup moi j'ai été un peu bloqué à cause de ça. Je n'avais pas bien compris, donc je me suis retrouvé avec déjà un vêtement en rentrant dans, un, dans une maison. Et du coup, bah, en fait, on ne peut pas jouer comme ça. Donc, est-ce que je suis passé à côté Ou est-ce que ça n'a pas été vraiment prévu en fait, dans l'exposition de la logique, de la mécanique Qui est à chaque fois, on laisse un vêtement. Et si c'est le cas, en y réfléchissant de mon côté, je me suis dit, mais finalement, à chaque fois qu'on rentre dans une maison, on rentre plutôt par l'entrée. Donc, ça peut très bien être le vestibule dans lequel en fait, on peut poser sur son porte-manteau, enfin sur un porte-manteau, un vêtement, et on doit aller récupérer l'autre, faire le tour de la maison, revenir, prendre le vêtement et repartir. Merci. On va récupérer cette idée du coup. Et euh... <rire> et euh... Non, non, clairement, on y a pensé à ça, mais à force de jouer au jeu, on ne s'est pas rendu compte de pas mal de petits détails comme ça qui empêchent les joueurs d'évoluer de... correctement. Et euh... ça mériterait euh... clairement qu'on qu y mette encore un peu de détails. De, donc vous confirmez, en fait, c'est n'est pas exposé C'est une façon de le dire, oui. D'accord. <rire> Merci. Thank you. Other questions, comments Well, I think after saying that this game is in Spanish, we have to thank you. English is great, don't, don't get me wrong, but um, we are closer to each other, so thank you for having the game in Spanish. We, we haven't been able to play it, but now, that's for sure, we're going there. We need to. Um, but despite that, uh, there is like another thing that I wanted to, to ask you about, and it's towards, I think, like the main the main topic that you're presenting in your game, that is uh, identity, yes, but also you talk about, about uh, you talk a lot about, sorry, clothing, okay, a lot. But during your presentation, we don't see too many examples of those clothes. And, and, and it's a pity because, again, it's, it's your main focus and you go way hard on telling, the, on, on telling us, hey, uh, you uh, try to express yourself, you, uh, and we can see different models. I think that up to six or seven upper clothes and four. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I think that it could be better to give more examples of it. And then I have to ask you, as uh, someone that um, think that there are more clothes because not everyone has such a good hair in our heads, if you have considered wigs or hats? Just a question out, out of interest.
uh, well, uh, speaking about the other alternatives for clothing, uh, we had to cut it because of time, but we plan to have uh, uh, the the upper upper body clothes, the bottom ones, and afterward having lots of different accessories. So there we can have like uh, hats, uh, collars, necklace, uh, uh, well, all that kind of stuff. And well, speaking about the balance between uh, the part of uh, the part where we took the um, the clothing and all the uh, all the identity thing. Um, we passed a long, a long time developing the logic that, it, that there's behind, that there's this situation where once a year, a phantom can come back and find its own way to become a human once more. So we have that made in the, in the way that if there's a phantom next year that wants to become the best uh, robot designer, we'll have a different quest. But the base is there. Thank you. Another comment or remarks? No, no questions. You didn't fit. You didn't find your uh, the wardrobe you you wanted, <laughs> or you want to try again. So if there's no more questions, let's congrats again. Talks memory. <laughs> And for those who didn't, didn't have the time to test it, you may have some time during the next break. But before that, let's welcome the next team, Alien Kebab. Hello, everyone. Wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. So today I'm going to present to you Alien Kebab, which is a visual novel about an alien landing on Earth in a particular place in the French suburb. So it's played on Android and tablet. So our influences for the game were mostly a film from the French film from the 90s, but also uh, Jean Giraud, maybe uh, uh, you know him as Mebius for the drawings, uh, Metropolis also, which is not on the uh, on this picture, Attack the Blocks, maybe you know also, uh, and yes, there there were really good influence for us about the drawings, the narration, and and the compositional story. Our first intentions when when we began the game were uh, to valorize people from the suburbs, uh, as they are not so much represented in the video game industry, uh, in, the in a poetic way, 
through the drawings, the narration, the music, and with some humoristic stuff also. And also we wanted the player to explore our world we created and uh, also discover the, 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 pers the characters of our games and their personalities. So uh, this is Idris, our main and playable character, which is uh, a delivery man uh, for uh, Uber Eats. And uh, yeah, he's living in the durif les pins which is our suburb uh, invented uh, for, uh, for the beginning. And uh, yes, this game is about choices through Idris to go through the, the storyline to help the alien. So, uh, welcome to Dirif Les Pins, the little suburb we, we invented for the story. Uh, so yeah, in this environment we, we wanted to, to have an, uh, a living env environment. Uh, and so, as you see with the animations, uh, the people, as you see also people talking, with also the music, you got some, uh, yeah, realistic sounds about, uh, yeah, this environment. So, these are uh, our characters of the story. It was really interesting to design them uh, at the same moment of the narrative design and, yeah, go uh, diving between uh, yeah, the narrative and, and the drawing. And uh, interesting fact, it's some of them are inspired for, from uh, our real life experiences. And say, uh, so, yeah, as you see, you got Idris on the top left, and you get also the alien, which is, uh, yeah, you will rec you will recognize it. When it comes to the UI, it was pretty challenging for us to make it fit perfectly with the artistic direction and still make it understandable and enjoyable to see and use because of the monochromatic aspect of the game. We use comics looking chat bubbles, so to better fit the universe, and a lighter green uh, than the one we have for the world game. This way, it's uh, more readable and light greens uh, shows what is interactive to the player uh, without looking out of place uh, with the illustration uh, as it's the same color tone. Hello everyone. So for the narration we did uh, break down uh, the storyline into three different paths. Uh, they all come from the same introduction, uh, but after you made several choices, you will end up in one of those uh, three branches. Uh, so the first one, the one everyone played for, those who played or will play, uh, was a special true operator uh, involving uh, light temps, uh, light questions about immigration, work, and um, I have poor eyesight, sorry, and uh, resourcefulness, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, the second one is uh, the Amazons, in which uh, you will have to uh, unveil the mysteries about a uh, mysterious uh, homophobia, homophobia, homophobic uh, attack in, uh, in the block, uh, which is about uh, uh, the very real Patriarchy, sense of honor displayed in the suburb. And the, first, the third one, sorry, uh, Godfather, is uh, a darker one about drug uh, violence and uh, influence of uh, the local Godfather on the drug uh, mob. So for the writing pro process, we did uh, uh, the world building as uh, four people and uh, we split it into uh, our intentions. Then we did a narrative tree to uh, to gather all the information or the, the scenario we wanted to create. Uh, then we did split it into tiny scenes. Then we have had to uh, populate it with uh, block out text. Uh, and then we had uh, the opportunity to work with uh, students of next year uh, of the Engmin who had us to write uh, the, the dialogues. Thanks. And then with the bags and we, uh, and then we, here we are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, for the sound design part and the musical aspect of the game, uh, there is two main points we worked on. The first one is the ambiences. The goal was to make them the more realistic as possible, because we want the player to feel like the people who are living in the places we are showing in our game. 
and the second one was to to represent the urban music and uh, music uh, that are listened also in the places we are showing again in our game. So we want to give a special thanks to people who helped us in the game. Uh, so first is Lolita Couturier who makes the animation for us. There is also Majdam Daoma who makes for us the dialogues. Thomas Darnay who makes for us the teaser. And there, there is Gueule de Bois and Pat Platine who made the music. You can listen. On. L'autre jour j'étais dans le kebab Pour moi c'est comme ça que le dit Ouais, le chef il dit on dit kebab Bah, on va pas le contredire Bref, l'autre jour j'étais dans le kebab Je crois que c'était un vendredi y avait un tel et machin qui était là Comme d'hab en train de vendre weed Dehors à main de se croyait dans GTA En Y sur son bolide Chef, tu peux me rajouter des olives Avec le supplément origan et feta Merde, j'en étais où déjà euh, Ah ouais, tout s'est passé hyper vite Idris, un petit livreur Uber s'est pointé avec un sera baissé là que J'ai rencontré un alien au kebab Ouais, j'ai rencontré un alien au kebab J'ai rencontré un alien au kebab Ouais, j'ai rencontré un alien au kebab So just to to finish, uh, the team is composed by uh, uh, Adel Kader, who may we who were the producer, uh, myself as the sound designer. There is, there was Zoe as the narrative and game designer. There was also Chloe as the UI and UX uh, designer too. Uh, Martin, who is the 2D artist, and there is also Etienne, who made the programming, who is the programmer. So. <laughs> And yes, we do rap, we do rap, original rap in uh, Njimin, that's great. Congrats. So who wants to shoot first? Who wants to react on this experiment? Yeah. Bonjour, uh, bravo. C'était très très cool. Uh, ça marche vraiment bien, pareil que... Uh, Beaucoup d'expérience de cette première année, il y a tout qui est, qui est là, c'est polish. J'ai eu juste un petit, un petit bug, mais voilà, on, on y croit, on s'immerge, on s'immerge dans l'univers. Alors voilà, on sent qu'il y a un peu des, des pistes qui n'ont pas été explorées, il y a des, des enjeux qui sont lancés, qui ne sont pas aboutis. Voilà, le, le jeu finit un peu brusquement, mais voilà, l'histoire se tient, ça tient dans la durée aussi, qui était un peu limitée. Donc voilà, du début à la fin, c'est plaisant à, à jouer, on se perd pas, on est C'est agréable à suivre, donc euh, vraiment voilà, félicitations, il euh, n'y a pas de questions, c'est juste un bravo. Euh, félicitations encore aussi, euh, j'ai passé un excellent moment, c'était vraiment cool, même à deux et avec le son de la tablette, euh, honnêtement avec Mathieu, on a vraiment, euh, on a vraiment, on était vraiment plongé dedans quoi, euh, que ça soit visuellement comme dans le son. J'ai une petite question côté euh, côté producing plutôt, parce que je vois que l'équipe était de à peu près 11 personnes, avec à peu près la moitié des, des gens qui étaient euh, des sources extérieures au projet, et je sais que ça peut être compliqué à coordonner, etc. Donc c'était quoi les gros challenges qu'il y a eu là-dessus, si on a eu et... Un deux, ouais. Bah déjà, euh, c'est euh, essayer de, on va dire, de connaître et d'appréhender le, le processus d'onboarding, on va dire. Donc, euh, c'est vrai qu'au début, à chaque fois qu'il y a une nouvelle personne qui, qui rejoint le projet, il faut, il faut pitcher, il faut lui faire comprendre la vision qu'on a du projet, essayer de, de faire en sorte à ce que le mood soit compris, parce que au début, on n'avait pas autant d'assets, on n'avait pas autant de, de choses pour euh, évoquer. Maintenant, c'est flagrant, ça se voit. Mais euh, au début, on n'avait pas tout ça. Et il fallait essayer de montrer cette vision qu'on voulait apporter et qu'on pense avoir réussi euh, pour transmettre, euh, 
voilà, ces choses-là pour que les gens travaillent avec nous. Donc ouais, il y avait déjà tout ce travail-là euh, bah, qui s'est fait assez naturellement. Ce qui est cool, c'est que ça s'est fait beaucoup dans l'informel, euh, toutes ces collaborations-là. Et euh, voilà, ça nous permet d'être bah, plutôt content du résultat. Hi. Um, well, first of all, congratulations. So many things about this game are great. First of all, the name, like, perfect. No, no, right at the start, I uh, just reading about your projects, Alien Kebab, first name, I want to. Like, enough. Uh, then you have so many things that you have uh, been, uh, th that you have think about, like, for example, the interaction and the interface. To pass the different dialogues, Despite having a signal to like press here to continue, you can press in any part of the of the screen. That's knowing about a platform that you are designing the game for, because yes, people will click everywhere or anywhere. So let's give them the chance. Then, of course, as you are using a more or less like a comic style um, uh, art style, okay, let's give them like uh, how do you say uh, bocadillo like the pop-ups for the dialogue, sorry, the boxes, yes, sorry, the boxes, yes. So, so many good decisions. Then, and then like the thing that the most important things, I was playing with Marta because Marta is able to read uh, French far better than, than me. Uh, but despite that, I was able to understand what was going on. Despite not knowing so much French to understand what, what were like the meaning of every single word, I was, I was uh, able to understand. And you must feel really proud about your your art style if you're able to do something like, can you go four uh, slides previously, more or less? Uh, this one, this one, the, the, this one. This is a background that I will love to my desktop or my, or my, or my phone. So, um, because I think that this picture sum up the experience. A guy in front of an alien looking like, Oh God, an alien, cool. <laughs> it's amazing. So again, congratulations on what you have been able to achieve. It's, it's amazing and even rap, so congratulations. I haven't yet played your game, so I'll have a comment, but I'll come here this afternoon or tomorrow. Euh, J'ai une question et puis quelques suggestions. Donc la question c'est, d'après la liste, hein, donc, comme je n'ai pas joué, je ne connais pas l'histoire des personnages, il y a peu de personnages féminins et il y a peu de personnages, disons, euh, les, 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 les gardiens de banlieue entre les teenage, entre teenage et, et une vingtaine d'années. C'est des gens qui sont plus âgés. Est-ce qu'il est qu y a une raison à ça Et puis après, je vous donne, ferai quelques suggestions. Alors, euh, bonjour, merci euh, de poser la question, parce que c'est vrai que pas, ça ne s'est pas fait naturellement pendant le processus. Euh, à la base, on avait euh, un personnage féminin de plus, on était à une presque parité. Euh, là, ce qui se passe, c'est que dans, je vous ai montré du coup tout à l'heure trois arcs euh, narratifs. Il n'y en a qu'un seul qui est joué. Euh, les deux autres nécessitent plus d'écriture de dialogue, plus de peaufinage, ils ne sont pas encore prêts à être montrés. Euh, dans ces arcs là en fait, euh, les, tous les personnages que vous voyez là n'ont pas la même importance sur mon arc. Et du coup, dans cet arc là on s'est retrouvé à la fin, euh, dans la version qui vous est présentée, avec euh, plus de personnages masculins qui ont de l'importance. Euh, le fait est aussi que bah, pendant le, les trois mois, là, on a dû faire des choix euh, de priorité, de, priori de priorisation. Et en fait, sans s'en rendre compte, on est, on est arrivé à un point de jeu où, euh, de petite décision en petite décision, bah, les personnages féminins avaient moins d'importance. Euh, et c'était un point tel que, bah, à la fin, on ne pouvait plus faire marche arrière sur les deux dernières semaines de, de réécriture, mais par contre, bah, du coup, ils seront ailleurs et vous pourrez les voir sans souci. Et euh, pour la question pour les jeunes, en effet, bah, c'est parce que là, c'est euh, Idriss euh, qu'on suit, et du coup, bah, dans les personnages qu'ils rencontrent, en effet, il n'y a pas forcément euh, que des jeunes. Euh, il voit aussi des gens de son âge qui sont plus de sa génération euh, à ce moment-là, euh, même si on voit quelques jeunes euh, dedans. Ouais, on voulait aussi montrer euh, ce qu'on ne montre pas euh, au travers des médias. Euh, C'est-à-dire, on voulait pas absolument montrer la troupe, de, la bande de jeunes euh, qui fout le bordel dans la cité. On voulait parler d'autres personnes comme Tata, comme euh, comme Erkin, le kebabier. On voulait montrer en fait tous ces gens qui sont pas forcément montrés euh, dans ces environnements-là au travers des médias. Euh, voilà.
Et euh, sinon, j'ai deux suggestions. Je pense, alors je, je vous dis ça, je n'ai pas encore vu votre jeu, mais je pense que d'une part, vous devrez, si vous avez envie de continuer, ce qui est une autre histoire, si vous avez envie de continuer, vous devriez, euh, on, si vous voulez, je vous aiderai à présenter ça à Arte, parce que vous êtes tout à fait dans le genre de truc euh, qu'Arte aime bien. Et puis il y a une autre suggestion, c'est que vous êtes à Angoulême et vous faites quelque chose qui est près du roman graphique. Donc, euh, rencontrer Jean-Philippe Martin, tout ça. Trouver un moyen de présenter votre euh, jeu au prochain festival de la BD. Bonne idée. Merci Stéphane. Some, uh, yes. Moi, je voulais vous féliciter sur le, globalement sur on va dire l'enrobage du jeu, la DA. Le, je trouve que c'est les choix sont vraiment hyper pertinents. Le, le style graphique en, en deux couleurs, le fait de ne pas avoir de choisi de noir, euh, être passé sur du blanc et un bleu un peu gris. Enfin, c'est vraiment hyper intéressant. Euh, L'ambiance sonore est folle. Franchement, j'ai vraiment tout l'enrobage du jeu, je, vraiment félicitations là-dessus, c'est vraiment excellent. Je suis un peu resté sur ma fin, j'avoue, sur le, sur le message de fond. Parce qu'en fait, même les dialogues, je les trouve vraiment super bien foutus. Euh, on, on sent vraiment la personnalité des mecs, c'est vraiment super cool. Par contre, c'est vrai que euh, je, je, quand, on, quand on présente le jeu comme étant euh, un alien qui débarque dans une cité, euh, au final, ce qui nous est présenté, c'est juste quelqu'un qui se déguise et il me manque le, le truc qui fasse ben, qu'on qu on, on a peut-être peur qu'il soit, enfin, qu soit découvert ou je sais enfin, là je suis pas en train de mais voilà il, je suis un peu resté sur ma fin là-dessus j'aurais voulu qu'il y ait un, une tension ou un truc qui fasse que ben, voilà on comprenne qu'il n'est euh, qu pas forcément à sa place qu'il n'est pas forcément accepté ça peut faire écho à d'autres messages euh, après voilà vous, vous choisissez celui que j'ai vu que dans la présentation vous traitiez de d'homophobie ça peut être, ça, je, je, voilà en fait je, je suis je suis j'avoue que je suis resté un petit peu à ce sur ce point là un petit peu sur ma fin mais par contre le reste est vraiment incroyable. Je, je, trouve, je suis super fan du, du, du travail global. Vraiment oh, bravo. Vous voulez réagir bon, On peut réagir rapidement. Effectivement, c est, c est, la profondeur, c'est aussi quelque chose qu'on recherchait dans nos intentions premières. Mais euh, c'est vrai que ça demande un, un travail assez lourd scénaristiquement qu'on n'a pas pu se permettre de faire malheureusement. Mais euh, pour autant, on apprécie aussi l'aspect léger et, euh, et euh, comment dire, sans prise de tête d'Alien Kebab qui permet aussi d'aborder le sujet sans forcément euh, rentrer dans, dans ce qu'appellerait qu Aïda le, le pathos. Mais euh, c'est voilà, en fait, on a voulu ne pas prendre trop de risques parce qu'on avait peur justement aussi de tomber dans ce pathos euh, et parce qu'on on se disait qu'en interne nos skills d'écriture nous permettraient peut-être pas d'arriver à ce niveau-là, même si on aurait bien voulu. Mais euh, de se contenter de, de ce côté humoristique léger, ça nous plaît aussi au final. Donc euh, effectivement, c est, c est, ça a été un choix par défaut dans la prod, mais qui nous plaît quand même. Voilà. Merci. Some other comments, reactions? Okay. So let's uh, congrats again uh, the, the team. <laughs> And let's have a break. So 20 minutes break, we are a bit uh, uh, sooner. So maybe come back at a quarter to four. A quarter to four, quatre heures moins le quart. And thanks again, and just, there will be two more teams.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Merci à tous. Merci à tous d'être venus. Il nous en reste deux. There's two more. So let's get seated and let's get prepared. And let's welcome. Are you ready? Let's welcome the next group, Chaser Band. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, everybody here uh, in this room today, each one of us has already played the game we'll present you. Here is Chess Band, the cat and mouse game in performer side view. We think parkour and chess tag are activities uh, which represent the best what kind of experience we wanted the players to enjoy. They gather the fields. We talked. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> um, we'll talk about fields just after, um, which are what we wanted to do and were a real goal uh, while developing the game. Our very first objective was to make it accessible for everyone. Also, we wanted to use the Chesta Games fields, uh, as you can see, and then extract its playful qualities uh, in order to adapt them into a video game. So Chessburn is playable on PC with uh, controllers. It matches platformer mechanics with baller dynamics. It is playable in local multiplayer with up to four players. And it is in platformer side view in 2D with 3D models and a cartoonish effect. I will now hand the microphone to Baptiste, who will talk about game design. Hello, everyone. Uh, so yeah, firstly, uh, I want to speak about the set of rules we choose to play tag in Chess Band. Uh, we iterate on many game mode, and finally, we choose the Fever game mode. Um, in Fever, uh, each player has the same goal, which is to get as much token as possible until the end of the game. Uh, mice take care. We'll see why in one slide. <laughs> nice, amazing. We choose the Fever Game Mode because we can use a timer which gave us, um, which gave us better control on the length of the experience. And because the token is a very powerful tool to um, create point of interest and to guarantee uh, players are going to go in, uh, in uh, multiple places of the levels and uh, it, uh, it it permits us to create more path too. But there is a twist to the Fever game mode. Of course, uh, we told that it was a mouse and cat game, so we have two main rules. We have the mice. Um, if you're playing with four players, you have up to three mice. Um, they don't have any bonuses or maluses, but uh, it's important to, uh, to say that they're the only ones who are able to collect tokens. 
contrary to the cat who cannot collect any token, which is uh, a big issue when the main goal of the game is to collect as much as possible. So the cat must, uh, at all costs, tag another mouse uh, so his victim becomes the new mouse and therefore the cat becomes the mouse. Uh, it's important uh, to say that the longer you stay cat, the quicker you get. All right, uh, how do you move in Shazer Ben? So yeah, we choose to uh, limit uh, our number of input to offer a more accessible gameplay. So you can run, amazing, you can jump, wow. And you can touch uh, other players, tag other players, sorry. Um, it's important to say too that uh, there's a features which is an anti-spam feature, so you can't smash your X button to hope uh, to uh, get uh, anyone going uh, near your position. <laughs> so yeah, you can do parkour too. Uh, it was important for us to add parkour because it offers much more liberty um, to move in this map. Uh, you gain momentum when you're doing parkour, you uh, open new path too. So yeah, you can swing, slide and wall jump. Uh, it offers also a lot of verticality in our levels. Oh yeah, let's talk about our camera. <laughs> uh, we choose a fixed camera which offers a lot more visibility uh, on our map, but it was also a challenge to choose uh, a good scale uh, between our player to, um, uh, to choose between, uh, sorry, the, um, the visibility of the Anna, which must be big enough uh, without decreasing too much the size of the characters. Uh, keeping them visible. So yeah, we choose the 1 to 11 scales. Plus we had to uh, uh, <laughs> to add the HUD to do So uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a challenge, but I think we, we got out of it uh, pretty well. And we have four characters, four playable characters, which are only aesthetic, uh, but um, they each have their specific personalities, uh, they have their own barks and voice line, uh, also animation. And there was a way for us to offer a large spectrum of representation uh, with uh, cool and fun vibes. You can see uh, my colleague right here, which I will under his, he already got a mic, so okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so let me introduce you to the four characters, starting with Jilly Baby, the lady with a blurry past. She's the most mysterious of the band. Then we have Astro Granny, the funky grandma fascinated by space and astrology. So watch out your camera, guys. Kevi, the fastest delivery guy of the city. You can be sure your tacos will never come cold. And finally, myself. I will do anything to get my promotion and I answer my boss at any time. So the burn universe takes place in a near future in a gigalopolis where human and anthropomorphics perfectly cohabit. The Chase Burn is a small group of individuals that nothing could gather except their will to play chess tag. Within its form, the love of parkour or the adrenaline of pursuit, their only goal is to have fun. The chess band gathers in extremity of the city, they turn into playgrounds. The arena, which takes place in a continent dock at sunset, represents how we see these places. And now, uh, let's oop, talk about the sound. So, for, for the, we saw that the music is really a potent uh, aspect of this kind of game. It transmits uh, dynamism and the feeling of speed. So we found that drum and bass was the perfect style of music to answer those needs. I also decided to add a funky style uh, and samples to match the visual aspects of Chess Band. The music is means to progress and intensify in the course uh, of a game in order to accompany and enhance the experience we propose. So here's an extract. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, so we hear the growing tension. Um, for the visual design, um, we, we, we see that the visual design and identity of each character of Chase Urban are really distinct and uncommon. Therefore, we recorded different actors uh, with distinct and specific acting to match the character design. So, for Jelly Baby, the jelly fish. La grandeur de l'océan. And we have Astrogony. Attention à ton karma, mon chou. <laughs> we have Kavi. Oh, on joue pour de vrai And we have Hubert de la branche. Ah oh, it's a... <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's a wrong, wrong man. Je ne peux pas, j'ai réunion. Ok. <laughs> so, the UI design is inspired by the parkour, with angular shapes. And our typography is a bit destructured, but we wanted it readable. And then we want everyone to enjoy the experience, so we plan different options in the settings menu. Uh, and then to keep flexibility and dynamism, the select champ also hosts the onboarding with the, with the hub. And there are two parts in this interface. First, players uh, choose their character, and then they uh, can practice in the bottom part. And next, choosing the first cut should be done quickly uh, to keep the, the replay value. That's why we made a simple interface with characters and a badge to roll for each player. And here, as you can see, the HUD uses the same landmarks. It is positioned at the bottom of the display to open the area. And players can find the main information, so time left, number of tokens, and the mark of the cat. And finally, the high score keeps the idea of horizontality with all characters on the same line. Besides the reward for the winner, there are also achievements for all players, uh, as you can see here. Uh, for the user research, at the beginning of the project, we ident identified uh, the target audience for the game, so high school students. We organized the playtest with, uh, with, this, with this audience in partnership with a game bar in Angoulême. And this ecological situation and the opinion of our public have helped us to take decisions and guide our choices. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, in order to deliver the best possible experience to the player, uh, I try to make the game development process as easy, fast and flexible as possible. Um, for instance, I exposed lots of variables to let the game designer fine-tune uh, the game fields. Um, I also exposed modular blocks and events to give uh, freedom and autonomy to the creators to integrate and iterate over features. And finally, I added a few tools, uh, like this one, which is, um, which is a, a character movement recording and visual visualization tool uh, to let the level designer uh, tweak maps. Now for our methods. Um, during the production, we organize priorities in accordance with uh, our will to make the game accessible. Uh, this went by several playtests, as Benoit um, said just earlier, and a various iteration to make sure we were going in the right direction. Uh, therefore, we had two main production pivots. First one regarding the game mode. In the beginning of the project, you had to get that three tokens only uh, in order to win the game. Uh, now, like uh, Baptiste said uh, in the beginning, uh, the fever mode allows us to have um, way better control on the experience. Also, characters were meant to have special abilities, um, but uh, due to lack of production time, we, we preferred to focus on more important features. 
So here is our team, our OSX for each specialization of uh, the engine. And uh, special thanks to our um, Zoe, Shui, and Anna, who helped us with the voice lines. And also everybody who were volunteer uh, to participate in the playtest. Thank you for your attention, and uh, we're waiting for your questions. Bonjour à tous, euh, moi j'aime bien les jeux en, en fast pace donc j'ai trouvé ça très très cool. Euh, j'ai juste une question que, que je trouve, enfin, je comprends pas en fait sur vos itérations, est-ce que vous pourriez revenir sur les slides précédentes, à un moment vous montrez le level design qui n'est pas le même, il n'y a pas le bateau, et vous avez une pipe qui indique bien qu'on peut passer, qu'on peut slider, et en fait ça vous l'avez retiré, vous avez mis un bateau, et en fait on ne peut pas comprendre qu'on passe, et vous avez dû me l'expliquer, et c'est un peu dommage parce que vous aviez trouvé la là, c'est cette slide là, avec le RB, voilà. Là, on comprend en fait la pipe qu'on peut qu'on peut passer en slidant. Alors, c'est peut-être, elle peut être plus basse parce que là, elle, elle paraît de la taille en hauteur du personnage. Mais là, c'est clair pour moi en level design. Et dans l'autre cas, en fait, il n'y a rien, il n'y a pas d'indication. Les ombres correspondent pas à la réalité, donc en fait, on peut même pas le déduire. Et c'est du coup, c'est un peu dommage que vous ayez eu à me l'expliquer. Euh, parce qu'en fait, naturellement, sur un jeu comme ça, on devrait comprendre tout de suite le level design. Donc euh, le jeu, c'est très cool, c'est super agréable de jouer un, voilà, un, un, au, au jeu de chat et à la souris, euh, comme ça, sur un, un niveau qui est, qui est très fermé. Mais c'est un peu dommage d'être passé à côté de ce truc-là, où vous aviez déjà une solution, et en fait, vous avez rétro-pédalé, enfin, en tout cas, vous êtes allé ailleurs, et finalement, vous passez à côté de l'opportunité de, de quelque chose qui est clair en level design, pour passer sur quelque chose qui est à interpréter, et du coup, c'est pas évident, quoi. En effet, euh, alors ça a été un choix très difficile en réalité euh, parce qu'on a eu beaucoup d'itérations de niveau euh, et finalement on a décidé de rester sur un seul qu'on a essayé de polish au, au plus possible et le niveau auquel vous avez joué a été euh, lui-même assez modifié euh, et on a voulu absolument montrer euh, les features que vous voyez dans le onboarding justement dans ce même niveau en fait. On voulait que les features que vous apprenez dans le onboarding, on les perçoive euh, dans, euh, dans ce niveau où il y avait déjà un level art qui était euh, très avancé. Donc ça a été, euh, on, si on retourne sur la, la map éventuellement avec le bateau, je ne sais pas si on l'a. Pour ceux qui n'ont pas joué au jeu, on a euh, un, un simple liseré jaune qui, euh, je l'entends complètement, n'est pas assez pour repérer justement le fait que, waouh, il faut passer en dessous. Euh, ce que l'on espère euh, pour, les, euh, pour, les, pour les prochaines itérations qu'on va faire, c'est de rajouter de nouveaux niveaux et euh, de libérer un peu plus celui-ci, de retirer justement cette phase où on est censé passer en dessous pour euh, offrir tout simplement une meilleure lisibilité de cette map et aussi quand même pouvoir euh, vous permettre de glisser dans d'autres levels hein, du coup. Donc euh, merci beaucoup pour ce retour, on est complètement d'accord avec vous. En fait, même sans trop modifier euh, l'art, si, si ton bateau il recule un peu et que vous, on, on sent qu'il y a un espace entre le quai et le bateau, possiblement ça peut mieux fonctionner parce que ça crée un appel, parce qu'on voit du vide et donc potentiellement on peut le déduire. Là, c'est parce que le fait que le bateau soit vraiment collé, collé, ce qui est d'ailleurs euh, jamais la réalité, ils ne sont pas collés euh, directement au quai. Mais voilà, donc en fait, je pense que même en level art, c'est déjà quelque chose qui n'est pas grand chose à modifier pour que ça fonctionne sans doute déjà mieux. C'est juste en fait faire cet appel du vide qui, où on peut déduire que possiblement on peut passer en dessous. Là, en l'occurrence, c'est assez dur de le déduire. Quoi. Voilà, mais merci beaucoup pour vos réponses et bravo pour tout le travail. Merci à vous. More feedbacks or reactions? Yes. Euh, bonjour, du coup euh, déjà bravo, je trouve que ça marche super bien euh, out of the box, ouais, on s'amuse tout de suite euh, sur ce jeu là. Euh, L'onboarding est, est hyper euh, bien, enfin j'ai pas eu de soucis à, à rentrer dans le jeu et avoir du fun euh, très rapidement. Euh, le seul truc qui m'a manqué, moi, c'est un petit peu plus de feedback euh, pour savoir quand est-ce que je suis le chat, quand est-ce que je suis plus le chat. Euh, je sais que vous avez mis des VFX, mais euh, 
on le voit pas trop. Après, il y a, au niveau de l'UI, ça se grise aussi. Et je me demandais si vous aviez eu des, des plans euh, pour faire des feedbacks euh, peut-être un peu plus clairs, peu, peut-être des feedbacks audio aussi avec des voice lines ou des barks. Euh, Est-ce que c'est des choses qui ont été envisagées que vous n'avez pas eu le temps de faire, par exemple Oui, pour les, euh, en tout cas au niveau sonore, c'était prévu. On avait des, des barks particuliers quand on se fait toucher et qu'on devient chat. Euh, mais après, au niveau du mixage global, c'était un peu compliqué. Euh, c'était bah, par manque de temps qu'on n'a pas pu faire ça, mais c'était prévu. Et également, on avait un problème par rapport au VFX de l'aura rouge qui mettait un peu trop de temps à, à spawn. Et donc, euh, on ne comprenait pas exactement qui est, quand il y avait la transmission. Donc ça, c'est aussi un truc, on, une feature qu'on voulait modifier. Je ne sais pas si tu en parlais. Mais c'est bon. Effectivement, c'est globalement du manque de temps. Euh, bah D'ailleurs, dans la dernière version, euh, euh, ça, a été, ça a été remodifié. Il y a beaucoup de, de petites choses comme ça. Effectivement, euh, c'est des choses qu'on a envie d'intégrer et qui, qui manquent. Euh, on, on est au courant, et, et, euh, mais euh, on, on espère continuer à travailler sur, sur le projet euh, qu'on aime beaucoup et, euh, et bah, l'améliorer justement pour ajouter, euh, ajouter toutes ces, euh, tous ces petits éléments qui sont petits mais ultra nécessaires. Merci pour vos réponses. Hi, uh, Jaime from my Madrid, Spain, Utah. Uh, first of all, again, congratulations for finding a really interesting core mechanic. Um, sometimes uh, when you need to create anything new, you need to try to start with combining previous ideas. And I think that you have created and used that with, hey, um, do you remember this game that you play as a kid? So let's just change it a bit so you have a new game. And you have made a really solid experience. Maybe from the visual point of view, it's also it's, it's great, and the grandma is absolutely astonishing. Sorry, that's my favorite. And I will stand by that, that choice, also in the Tinder of the other game. So, but, but then there are things that are not so clear. Like, for example, uh, the limits here, exactly in, in this, uh, this was the slide that I was going to ask you for, that you need to go below the, the yellow line. Maybe that's... Uh, Maybe that breaks a bit of the illusion. Maybe that uh, there could be better ways to express the same information. Uh, and also, I wanted to ask something that I think that I uh, uh, commented you uh, yesterday about the amazing range <laughs> that you have to slap your friends. You told me that uh, that you test a lot, but uh, at the same time, we tried with you. <laughs> In, in, yeah, there and the, the range was too much. So I wanted to tell us a bit about the feedback that you get because um, sometimes when we, in games in the industry we see a lot of shooters, but that's usually because it's easier to make a shooter than to make a, a physical game when you need to tag or punch or in this case slap or tag another player. So I, w I would like you to give a bit of the feedback that made you, um, I can give a ridiculously high, uh, huge sorry, range to the attack. So yeah, uh, regarding the, the range uh, on which we can tag another player, uh, indeed we iterated uh, a lot on this. Uh, in the beginning of the, the development, it was way tighter. Um, and um, during playtests, we saw that uh, the feedbacks we had that uh, it was too difficult to touch another one. Um, and we we had we had um, what Betty said with the anti-spam function, and uh, we it was uh, necessary to have a great great timing, and with our character controller, the speed on um, on which characters go, uh, it was uh, necessary to widen it. Um, of course, uh, there, um, how it is right now, mm, it is big, it is really big. Um, but uh, during playtests, we had great, uh, great feedbacks about it. Like uh, it's, uh, it allows to transmit the the wool of the cat uh, um, more regularly, and um, 
and have uh, more movement on it. And I must add that uh, we heard your feedback uh, from a lot of you uh, yesterday, and it's, we reduced a bit the, uh, the slap it box. So it should be OK. Please come and play it. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, let's do a tournament, maybe. Why not? So, yeah. But sorry, if just to go back to you, what you have said, you have a cooldown in the slap. So again, this is another thing that I that I think that I commented you yesterday. Is it possible to instead of a slap to be like a magnetic pulse, some kind of uh, thing that surrounds you, so the slap gets something like yes, a bit uh, a bigger range, a bigger way to try to tell the player, hey, this is the range that you have, and also like a bar of energy to try to tell you the cooldown. Because there, is there any visual clue to know the cooldown, or just you trying to overslap? Uh, the animation can help to see uh, that you cannot uh, slap um, in half a second. Uh, but uh, more than it, uh, no, we, we could have uh, uh, VFX and visual effects and sound effects, which, uh, like you said, are um, magnetic field. Um, but for now, uh, aside from uh, the animation, uh, no, we do not have uh, any feedback. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we can congratulate you and uh, so big rows of applause. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, and maybe let's uh, welcome the last team of the day. Fire up. Firefighters are on the scene, and uh, we're ready to make the place clean. Be careful, because it's not Halloween. Welcome to Fired Up. Fired Up is a four-player co-op couch game. Players take on the role of small firefighting animals that will have to extinguish fires. The goal of the, play of the players is to save the objects in the house before they burn. Players will be able to cooperate through several small levels using everything they can find. We'll talk about it in more details later. 
Our intentions are to highlight cooperation and team spirit during the game and to have a good time together in a total mess. Hi there. Hi there. You play. In Fida, you play as cute little animals which are trained in firefighters. The camera was first designed so that objects are big and visible enough. Then we designed our levels with our camera in mind so that the whole level fits into the screen. Finally, we wanted our game to be as accessible as possible, so we designed simple controls. You can move and dash, pick up and throw things, and use tools as well. When all items are charred, Players lose the game. They win a game by extinguishing fires and fire spirits. In case of victory, a number of stars are awarded according to the percentage of objects saved. So what are fire spirits? Fire spirits are little fire AIs that are here to annoy you and bring twists and turns into the game. Their goal is to burn down the house, so you have to do everything you can to stop them. In a level, play players can use the environment to help them put out fires, such as an aquarium, a water gun, or a shelf. They can use containers that they can fill at water sources. The amount of water will determine the area they can water. When the players are struggling, they can use extinguishers. They are one use only, but they are very effective. Our intention is to make our, player our players feel more chaos. For our game to exist, we needed to create levels. Let's go through the core principle of our level design process. We carefully designed four onboarding levels and three houses. In order for the game to be easy to learn, we designed straightforward tutorial, tutorial levels with one level for each mechanic. Each of our three levels is thought of as a part of a progressive difficulty which increases throughout the game. Levels were also designed to be very unique. Each level has a different layout, circulation, and one landmark element. The first level is an easy level for, player, for players to get acquainted with the mechanics of the game. The areas are large and allow free movement to learn how to control their characters. The river increases the difficulty to straighten players' skills, player skills and introduce dashing and throwing mechanics. This level has a unique layout a house separated in two parts by a river that players can use. The difficulty is rising with the geyser level. No water sources at hand, only the geysers can fill the containers. There will be also a plot twist by spawning a different kind of fire spirits, the kind that is going to spice up even more the final round. Now let's talk about our artistic direction. So. As you can see with the game design, uh, we had the players, they needed to identify things quickly. There are a lot of things on the screen. One of our goals was also to appeal to a broad audience so that children and elderly alike could play our game. So we chose cute and simple visuals to not clutter the game. And we wanted it also to be funny in cartoons so that everyone can have a great time. So here, we took inspiration from the best in the field, namely Overcooked, Moving Out, and Boomerang Foo. As you can see, their design is quite simple, yet effective. We took inspiration from that to integrate it in our artistic direction. So here is a little sample of the 3D assets that we produced for our game. As you can see, they're quite simple, yet colorful, and we think it fits right into our intentions. I also had to, to, to I also had to work on the more technical side of things, so work on VFX and shaders, uh, as we had big visibility issues with the items behind the fire and behind the walls, I had to design a custom render pipeline so that people can see what's behind things. I also made what I call quality of life shaders so that our level designers and anyone in the team can actually produce things in the level more easily. And also I did various effects such as procedural animation on the ears and the tails of our characters and other shaders. We want our, sorry. We want, we want our play players to feel that they're in a captivating atmosphere. So in order to accompany the game, we have composed a jazz swing music with the Ethan, our external member, which will evolve according to the 
general state of the game. Accelerated jazz permitted us to have the tempo we wanted to our gameplay. For sound design, we have chosen a cartoon-like style that allows us to transcribe the gameplay and the event that take place on the screen in a clear way. We have the WISE engine uh, with Unity to facilitate integration and have more control over sound effects. I will show you a small sample of what we made so far. No, no game can be made unless there are well-made tools that guide and help us along the way. Now let's take a look at what was in our toolbox that helped us create our fiery and furry adventure, shall we? Now, one of the first tools in our toolbox were playtests. We use these throughout Fired Up's development. Our objective was to bring the dev team actionable insights on critical issues from players that showed the team what was working and what was not, thus freeing up time for them to work on bringing ga great gameplay to the players. So we had two types of playtests, internal and external. Internal playtests allowed the team to know what the current state of the project was and to find glaring issues that we could work on immediately instead of digging in deeper and freeing up time for everyone else. Generally at the end of the sprint we had these and we also had our second type of external playtests. These had the objectives of seeing if the team's intentions corresponded to what players were experiencing. So we looked if there were any frustrations and comprehensions about game mechanics, and then I brought them back to the dev team, where you will see an example in the format in which I brought them back. I will let you appreciate it. Thank you for appreciating. So, uh, in order to help our game designers to create awesome levels quickly and to improve uh, item workflow creation, uh, we set up some tools. So at the beginning of production, I created a visualization that represented which path the fire could take. So as you can see, each red circle is a flame, and each line is a possibility of how the fire could spread. Game designers could then place items properly in each level. We decided to, sorry, we decided to create a curve that handles the acceleration and deceleration of fire spread and to spawn new fire spirits. The goal was to adapt the difficulty to the player's decision. Thanks to this curve, the fire system matches the game designer's intentions. And finally, we used a free version of Odin Inspector, which is a plugin that permitted us to validate our assets and levels in one click. When game designers created new items, such as containers, flammable items, the validator shows custom errors. The tool was very efficient in locating and fixing critical errors in our final build. In order to, in order to organize ourselves, we use the Scrum method to... We use the Scrum method. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We set up a backlog, sprints, and daily meeting. Thanks to this, we managed to perform several cuts throughout the project to deliver it on schedule. Our mission is complete as firefighters. Our stand is open, and we're ready to receive you tomorrow. Don't worry, it's not burning hot. We got air conditioning. A special thank you to Ethan uh, for his implication in um, Fired Up. Our warmest thanks to, you, to all of you. <laughs> Thank you. So, yes. Just before we ask some questions, please, everyone, a big applause for Catherine, who helped us for every project. Thank you. I want to say congratulations. I loved this game. We loved it so much, we had to come back and play it again <laughs> today. We played it yesterday. It's amazing what you did. Um, we loved everything, the gameplay, the art, the sound, everything is so neat. I don't know, it's nice. There's just one thing I wanted to let you know, and it's that the collaborative work among the players is not that clear.
you know. There is one level that we need to be collaborative in order to stop the fire, but in the rest of the levels, you feel like you need to stop the fire, but you don't really understand that it is possible to collaborate with each other. In fact, I played with two kids that like to, gain, to, to win every time, you know, and to be the best. So they, they were even taking the buckets from me in order to be them, you know, to have the water and stop the fire. And um, so we really enjoyed and have a lot of fun. You know, we really liked it, but we didn't really understand that it was a collaborative game. And it, that was your goal. So I think this is something to work on a little bit, but I mean, we loved it and we really liked it and congratulations because it's a great, great job. Yeah, if I may continue with uh, with what Marta was saying, because I think that's one of the best parts. Uh, the interface is great. The way of how you keep track of the score is really, really well made. I, I realized of that today and it was great. Maybe a bit change a bit of the characters to differentiate them more. That's just something, but with the collaboration, there is something that happens always when you decide, hey, my game is going to be competitive, my game is going to be collaborative. Um, okay, that's great, but if you decide, whatever you decide, go harder on that. If you want players to collaborate, avoid competition or try to uh, minimize the, the, the words for competition. If you want it to be competitive, then take our collaboration, okay, but go hard for that. And I think that you already had an answer to try to get, to develop uh, a level that also use um, that, uh, that, that mechanic of collaboration. If you, for example, uh, as happened in some of your, um, of your reference in Overcook, you divide the level, for example, and you put uh, um, changing water sources in one place or another, you will make the players refilling the bucket and throwing the bucket to the other place so the other players can stop the fire and go and on and on and on. So uh, I think that there is like a, that's like the possible path to continue to expand the game, to develop more collaborative uh, mechanics. But apart from that, it's amazing, yes. Now, in fact, one of the things, if you can uh, extinguish the fire in another member of the team because at first is okay someone is burning over there but you can you can save another uh, uh, so you can be a hero also in that sense the, so expand it in the sense maybe when you have real fires you have to close the doors not to fire to span maybe you have a hero trying to hold the fire the, the door not to span the fire while another one is getting the water but the one who is over there can be burned. So in that sense, it creates tension at the same time, creates cooperative ways. Or as we told you previously, uh, yes, I enjoy the parion, I enjoy the bucket, uh, not so much for the, for the plants, <laughs> yeah. but uh, all the tools are quite nice. Uh, uh, we told you a few times, yes, the, the bathtub, a bathtub, and you need two people for, or three people to grab the bathtub, you go in more slower, but you can get a huge amount of, of water. Or in that sense, I don't know, maybe, you know, I know you don't have hates in the sense of, uh, you, you can jump over things, but you cannot jump up on another, but we try to give water to each other from different levels, and it worked. So, <laughs> we were stand, okay, I'm going to throw water to you, uh, you fill your bucket and you go. So, you can have many possibilities uh, to, to develop that cooperative way, but we have really fun of it. So, Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to react a bit on your feedbacks. So we had several collaborative features that weren't implemented into the game. And uh, at the moment in the production, we saw that some of our co co collaborative mechanics uh, don't work, but we spend a really good time with the game, so we focused on that aspect, and we know that we can uh, um, increase uh, the collaboration in the game, and we'll try to do better. So that's actually one thing also I wanted to just fill in a little bit from the playtest side. 
one of the playtests that we had, we were extremely worried that we weren't having the cooperation we wanted. In our first playtest, we had people uh, strategizing, uh, carrying this from here, going there. But what we noticed is that a lot of people were playing for their first time in the second playtest, which had a lot more features implemented. So what ended up happening is we hypothesized that perhaps once people start uh, playing this game more, they will make more strategies. They'll say, delegate this task to this person, etc. But yes, we were extremely worried about that, and we really wanted to implement more features with two people, because essentially we have, we have a couple of mechanics, but we want to add a lot more. So there you go, TFU. Yeah. Thank you for your awesome feedback. I also will add, also add that at one point, when we saw the results from the playtest, we were concerned about it, but we chose to polish the overall game experience instead of just reworking the whole game levels and stuff. So yeah, we are aware of that, and yeah, hopefully we will expand it and make new things and yeah, work on this side. Thank you so much. Bonjour. Euh, moi, je voulais vraiment vous féliciter parce que je pense que de tout ce que j'ai vu de, des différents projets, je pense que c'est le projet le plus abouti en termes de level design. Donc forcément, comme c'est ma discipline, j'y suis sensible. Et je suis très impressionné parce que je ne sais pas d'où vous avez tiré en fait cette approche qui est très très rationnelle déjà. Euh, donc je voulais vous dire un grand grand bravo là-dessus parce que c'est plutôt très rare en fait de voir ça dans les écoles euh, où vous avez vraiment insisté sur euh, voilà vos, vos ingrédients, la logique d'espace. Euh, et je trouve que également l'affordance est très très claire dans le jeu. Donc euh, un grand bravo pour tout ça. Voilà. Merci. Merci pour votre retour. Thank you. Is there a last comment? Yeah. Hey guys, um, congratulations again. Uh, maybe one feedback that I noticed uh, from you, but also the project before, and uh, I wanted to give a shout out from the programmers to give the tools to the game design to be able to iterate as much as they as they pot potentially or possibly could. Um, I really want to emphasize how important it is for projects to have soon testable builds to be tested internally, not just during playtests, because playtests are important, obviously, but testing internally and between you guys is also very important as soon as possible, as soon as you can, so that you can realize what you can do, cannot do, and what needs to change. So, um, congrats. So Catherine, uh, first, uh, I would like to thank you for that. And also, I would like to thank the team for as well doing this, because it's difficult to look at your product, your dream game, and be critical about it. So I wanted to acknowledge the team for that. But also thank Maximus, because uh, we were able to use his uh, assets to create a pre-prototype in which uh, I insist we insisted on testing as soon as possible. So I believe we tested within three weeks of uh, launching or something like this. I'm not exactly sure of the time frame. Yeah? Two, or three, yeah. Two or three weeks. So thank you very much for your feedback. So I think there's no more questions or remarks. Are there? So if no, uh, so let's congratulate you again for this amazing job. I would like to ask all the teams to come back, come down, please. So we can uh, give them a, lo a big, big rose of applause because they, they've done a really, really great job with this project. So please join me. You jury, who would, would you have guessed, I, I will try to do something, would you have guessed two days ago that you would have gone through a storm with a kite, find about 
find out about Abel through liminal space, met Astro Grammy on Tindall, and escaped from an e-pad for a cat and mouse party with her, rescue a mermaid, or made her very, very hungry, explore a mysterious landscape, uh, play, oh, show your health, your, sorry, show your heavy leg muscle while playing Sepak Taktro. <laughs> Fight for your honor with a pool noodle. Steal some clothes to, to come back to the living. Meet an alien, an alien okay, bab. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, finally, and finally, burn all your furniture because I'm sure you did, like me, burn everything. Thank you so much. Congrats. So you can really be proud of you. You made a really amazing, amazing job. So we, we saw all the creativity you, had, creativity you have, all the talent you have. Thank you for sharing that with us. It was a pleasure to accompany you uh, along this, uh, this way. Stefan Natkin is not here anymore, but he told me to ask to tell you. He asked me to tell you. He had to go. He will come back tomorrow. That's what he wanted to say. But he wanted to say that he was really happy to see back all this um, um, experience you've built, all this imagination you show. Uh, so really, congratulations for all of that. Mm. Uh, we are really proud of you, so be proud of yourself. Uh, you've done that in three months and a half, guys, so great. Of course. <laughs> we also want to thank all the technical uh, uh, team which accompany us all the time and make uh, magic with all these old systems. Thanks to Javier, Florian. Many thanks to the administrative uh, team as well. May, Anne-Laure, Hélène, Charlene, Indira, who just uh, left. <laughs> uh, because they are all important in, in for, the, for the school and for you. And I'm sure that you know that. So big a, a round of applause for them. Thanks to the jury to be there. Thanks for your comments, your reactions, uh, the sharing of uh, your uh, experience to them. It's, it's a f of a big value. Thank you for coming here as well. We are not uh, easy to join. Well, not so, not so. Well, it's not so bad, but it's worth it, isn't it? Uh, thank you for coming and thank you for all the questions you've asked and the exchange. Many thanks to the pedagogical team. I think you agree with me on that. Uh, we have a lot of great person here, so thanks, thanks for them. Thanks again, and please enjoy the rest of the day. And tomorrow, uh, it was a great, great cuvee for the 20 years of Engmin. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>